fellows to be able to read the details because he is also a passer. Not so much as six, but he still is looking to pass the ball to two and to three. And ideally, that's where you want the shot to be taken, from two or three. It's their closest to the goal. Okay? So, good shooter, quick release, able to read the defense. Four and five. Obviously, they've got to be good outside shooters. If they're not, the defense is going to drop some. Six is probably your most important position. Because being that we're most always right-handed, he's looking to pass the ball to three or two. So he's got to be able to lead the defense. That's probably his most important attribute. Reading the defense and being able to pass the ball successfully to the postman, the postman certainly outside. Obviously, it would be great if he were left handed and he was a good shooter. But let me say this not all left handers do a good job of playing six because they can't see past the post. They're not good readers, they don't understand the defense get a good post pass. Oh. We have them on the national team. We've got a couple of left handers that don't even belong out here because they never ever see passes to two or three. So what you're better off doing there is putting a right hander out here that understands reading the defense, trying to find somewhere else for the left hander. Now a left hander, especially if he's big, all right, you put him in a two or three. All right? Here's a good spot, but then you have both sides of your short triangles for people who pass it. So left-handers can go to two or three, or at five. Seldom do you put them in four. And any questions about prototype players and where they should go? Try to attack one side or the other. 
depending on where the ball is. either on the 1-4 side or the 5-6 side. A short pass. And the idea of attacking on one side or the other is what you're trying to do is get this center defender to one side or the other. Okay? Make him honor one of the postmen. Right? So you start off some 4-1 passes. Now to help bring the center defender and the goalie to this side, we do a couple of things. Right, first thing is that one is going to fake the ball. And he's going to look at two. Two is going to look like he's going to shoot the ball. So if I'm a two man, every time one gets the ball, I go up like this. Like I'm really lucky to get the ball to the shot. This is on the decoy. Now obviously, if the center defender doesn't come over to cover me, you know, I may get the ball to the shot. But again, what I'm trying to do is get that center defender to really come over and honor me. Right? One takes the ball and you're going to come over. Four doesn't have to take the ball. Four looks at the goal and then goes back to one. The big emphasis is right here at one. Right? One looks like he's going to shoot the ball. One looks like he's going to pass the ball into the post. Right? Now, what do we have on this side? We have one, two, three defenders, and the goal. What do we have on the other side? We have two defenders and no go. Right, so now what we're trying to do is swing the ball quickly to the other side. And you've seen this in basketball all the time. You know, work on one side and all of a sudden the ball will go to the other side. Right, so basically what we're trying to do is beat the defense. So we'll go, we go four to six, we go five to six, four, five, six. In any case, we're going to try to get the ball to the other side as quickly as we possibly can. But now, when you get the ball, especially when we move the ball across the court, right, your priorities are look for a shot. You look for a pass to the post. And then if you don't have either of those, then you try to set the goalie, set the defender, and then move the ball across again. So, when the ball gets to six here, he's obviously looking for a shot, or he's looking for the three pop. Oh, right here? No. If neither of those is open, this man may drop, five man slides here, we go to five for the shot. So you have three pretty decent options right there. Okay, six shot, six three pass, six five shot. And of course from that, depending what happens, maybe the center defender is successful in coming over, you might have six two inside or six five two. So you're really attacking hard the center defender. Now let's look at the other side. And you'll see hopefully what we're trying to accomplish. Now on the other side, we start the ball over here in the same type of situation. We want to start off with short passes, 
All right, if we're not going to get intercepted, if we don't lose the boat. Okay, what are we trying to accomplish? We're trying to get the goalie over here. We're trying to get the center of the fender over here. So six is going to bank. And three is going to pop. Three, unlike two, is really good over there. The pop into the seam between six and five. So he can really drive that center defender over. All right? So back and forth between five and six. And now we're going to swing the ball on the other side. We can go six, five, one, or six, four, one, depending on where the defense is. In any case, we get the ball over here. Hopefully the center defender taking his time getting across. So we have, obviously, one shot possibility. One to two. One to four. Or one to four to three. And all those options are depending on what the defense does. And so that's our basic start our six on five attack. Now, if there's one other thing that we do, that's what we call the six four attack. Okay, start out with some six four passes. Four looks like he's really going to shoot the ball. So what is that going to do? Well, it's going to draw the four defender towards him. A center defender, basically four has the ball, is going to be here, or he's going to be on three when six has the ball. We don't have to worry about him. So what you're trying to do here now, six four, six four, six two. Two hand pops to the ball, and it should be a fairly easy shot, especially if you have a pretty large player. Too. Now, from this, you run what we call the sucker play. When six gets the ball, two slides into the middle. Okay, five and two, six gets the ball, I do this. But guess what? I don't go back where I was. Right? I don't go back here. I stay here. Right? Let's say we do it again. Right? So what I do is I end up, after a couple passes, I end up over here in the middle, like so. Right? So what are we trying to do? It should be obvious we're trying to get the X1 guy to go here. That's his responsibility. So what, what is that going to do? That's going to create a huge hole here for one. So you go six four fake, six four fake, six four one shot. And that will work successfully for you a couple of times a game. Things like this you want to save, like after timeouts. Because if you do it all the time, it's pretty easy to defend. You just have X1 stay put. When this guy comes over in the middle, right, the center defender comes over and slides and picks him up. If you know it's coming, it's pretty easy to defend. But it will, it can pay you some good dividends after a timeout, later on in the game, or run it maybe one time. But that's our other attack, our 64 attack. Now, obviously, if you have left-handers, you, know, you can do things. You put a left-hander on the three post, you can do the same thing, or right, going the other way. There's a lot of variations you can do depending 
on your personnel. Questions so far? Now, if we are unsuccessful in getting a shot from our passing attack, then we go into some type of rotation. And this is almost going into a 3 3. Or in some cases, it's totally going into a 3 3. One very popular rotation that a lot of European teams use and we use is what we call six in. That's where six has the ball, he actually takes the ball into or inside the yard line. Okay? Yeah, what happens is that five rotates with it, four rotates into the center, and then one has the option of coming up into the pocket, or staying down, or coming up and going down. So what are you doing here? Well, you're creating a new shooting lane. Okay, you're kind of almost in a 3-3 three, three here. Look for 6 2 inside because you bring this defender out here. Center defender has to be over here. So 6 2 inside. Yes, sir. When you do a 6 in, you uh, move the post close to the 6 out, and then the, uh, the you move the, uh, the 2 man in and the 3 man out. Uh, yeah, you do that. When you do a 6 in, you usually. Uh, you can go. You can two goes in with the ball. Three pops out here. There's a lot of things, a lot of little variations you can do. Here. All right. So again, six and two is a good opportunity. Oftentimes, when you go into a rotation, the defense tends to forget about three. So you might have six to three. Another really good opportunity, obviously, would be six to four seven. It's four center cage, five meters. That's a pretty good shot. Another option is this guy comes up, bring him up, and then he goes back down again. And now you have a sucker situation. So you go six four one. Or if you have a good shooter at one, he's up here in the pocket, get him the ball, and let him shoot the ball. And a lot of European teams are actually doing too, because you've got Tony Azevedo over here, who's a great shooter. You know, he just kind of let him wander around where he wants, and they know that at the end of the 35, or even the kick out, he's going to get the ball and shoot it. There's very few people that can stop that shot. But it depends a lot on your personnel. Anyway, that's one rotation that's very, very popular on this. Now, obviously, you can do it the other way. You can go one in. All right, it's a change of pace. And the Russians do one or the other all the time. And they rarely get the ball in the post, so you just have really good outside shooters. They rotate one way, rotate the other way. And again, we're just trying to get new shooting lanes for the outside shooters. So the one in, that brings five into the middle. Four comes wide, and six can come up into the box. So you go that way. I think that offers fewer scoring opportunities unless you have some left-handers on the post than six in. 
but I think the six here is a lot more popular. Okay. Any questions on that rotation? Now, you can start this in a variety of ways. You can start it with six in. You can start it with some six five passes, or maybe some six five four passes. But in essence, what we're going to do is five is going to slide, four is going to slide, and the two man is going to back out here. Start at 3 3, and we'll go down into a 4 2. Do this a couple of ways. You need to go, I call it basically three drive. But what you're going to do, you have the ball right here. And he's going to tap forward. He's going to give and go. So you give the ball here, to six. To two is going to slide this way. And this man is going to drive down to the three post. Right, so what are our options here? Well, 
When he drives down, he looks and tries to get a feeling for what this guy is doing right here. If he doesn't follow him, or if he hands him off to either the center defender or this defender, this guy stops right here with a quick grab and shot. So that's an option. When he gets down to the bottom, if the center defender doesn't shift across, he could have him at the bottom. If the center defender shifts across, you've got the two top right here. If they shift here, you got your second play. Six point one shot. This man follows him, he moves into the vacant area here, sets five shot. Remember that pans out, and you run your four on two or four two attack. You can also do the same thing to drive the center man down. Okay. If he can go down, he can slide this way. I noticed in my scouting on the Dutch team, Dutch were the last team to make it into the Olympics, and that's one of the things they do. They'll do the same thing, except they'll drive this guy down. Start with 3-3, three, three, down he goes. Possible RBA, down to three. She comes winning. He slides here. Shot. So three, three, into a four. Any questions there? If you have. Some coaches. And pull them in and out. And we'll attack five against four like this. It might be an interesting six in there during the regular attack. But this is an option. Especially if you're worried about a counter attack. Now, I might use this attack uh, if we're up like a couple of goals near the end of the game. And I'm going to just take my other man is sticking out here in case there's a counter. All the way to the end of the game when you want to yeah. guard against the uh, counter attack, why would you ever not use all six guys in the middle of the Because they're going to split. I said, bro, what they're going to do if you leave all six guys in the middle that's what they're going to do. So this guy. That's the general attack possibility. So if you attack five against four, you can be one guy back to guard against them. That's the conservative approach.
Okay? Your mind is probably more fertile than mine, than my age, so you can probably come up with all kinds of different script plans. <coughs> And one that we run, especially if we have uh, a spreader that can set, if we get the ball, we get the ball to go with it. They obviously can't come press the goal. Right? And then our spreader starts forward, and then especially if we get ball side position, the ball's asked into the strike zone, and our goalie tries to hit him with a ball side pass. <laughs> if he gets fouled, these two guys out here come forward and they run a cross pick. If he doesn't get the ball in here, he will release. The goal will throw the ball over here and we'll run this cross pick. That's just one example. And as I said, you know, whatever you can come up with. Okay, underwater plays. You know, I'd be surprised how many times these crazy things work. If that doesn't work, 
This guy can set, you go right, you set. And you could go the other way. Okay, so that's two. And three. Put three guys go down the other. Now here's your setting. It would cross fit by the center, by itself. All right? So this guy can be open on his back. This guy can be open for a wet pass. The center can be open. Or when you run these cross fits, the defense may have to switch. So you end up with a smaller, less skilled person guarding your set there. So that's the other possibility. Yes, sir. Uh, in the Olympics, in Seoul, we were tied with the Hungarians for less than a minute to play. We had just scored. Uh, we needed to win the game. And a tie would have advanced the Hungarians and not us. We absolutely needed to go. So we ran this high school play. And you, excuse me, there and three guys down here. And they set a triple bump by itself. Okay, the goal or whoever it is, put the ball, passes the ball down to the outside post. Okay, and these were the days when it was almost an automatic foul whenever the ball came in. All right, so it was a foul. This man popped out on the screen. Pass, goal, and you go to the metal round. That's a triple punch. Um, it's a simple funky high school play. Big three. Same idea. And end of the quarter. You got maybe 20 seconds to go. The ball's back to the goal. Right. The goalie has the ball, he moves out in your half ten. <laughs> Five, four, three, and he shoots the ball. And he shoots it low, I shouldn't say low, but he shoots it to the point where any of the three guys in front of the cage to get up and try to deflect the ball into the goal. So that's another type of special play. At the end of the quarter, you don't really have enough time to set up a good front court offense. Run a big trip. And the idea is to make sure the goalie shoots the ball low enough. So if somebody misses it and the goalie stops it, maybe one of these guys can go in and chase the goalie and make him take it in the water for a short shoot. Questions? Yeah. I think that's about it.